And now for something completely different. Hi, my name is Annie Grossman, and I'm a dog trainer. This podcast is brought to you by School for the Dogs, a Manhattan-based facility I own and operate along with some of the city's finest dog trainers. During this podcast, we'll be answering your questions, geeking out on animal behavior, discussing pet trends, and interviewing industry experts. Welcome to School for the Dogs podcast. Today, I am going to walk you through what I call the invisible triangle method of teaching look. Uh, I think look is a really excellent thing to teach any dog of any age. Some people call it uh, watch me or attention, whatever you want to call it. Basically, you're teaching your dog to connect their eyes to your eyes on whatever cue you give. And of course, that cue, uh, today we're going to use look, but you could be using their name. You could say eyes. You could say bubblegum, baba ganoush. It doesn't matter. Um, But you are going to give it some kind of cue. Of course, if you don't give it a cue and you just teach them that locking eyes with your eyes is always a good thing. That's certainly not a a bad thing to teach either. I generally think that everything we train our dogs to do pretty much comes down to targeting. Targeting being teaching them to touch one thing to another. Of course, pretty much the first thing I teach every dog I work with is to hand nose target, so to touch their nose to my fingers, uh, to my hand, or to touch their nose to an object. And while there are lots of reasons that I like to teach this specific exercise, the big reason is that I think of it as a building block exercise that you can use to teach lots of different things because really what you're teaching is If you touch X to Y, then good thing happens, and basically everything you're ever going to train your dog comes down to something that can fit into that equation. Sit is if if you touch butt to ground. Down is if you touch body to ground. Go to the crate. Well, that's if I touch body to crate. And I think that teaching look is really just the same thing, except it's if I touch my eyes to my human's eyes, a good thing happens. And like I just said, certainly if that becomes just a default behavior, it's never going to be a bad thing. Since if your dog locks eyes with you, you certainly have your dog's attention, and then that's a great starting place for getting your dog to do whatever it is you want or need him or her to do. So there are many ways of teaching look. This way that I came up with is one I like because we're really just going to break it down to its smallest components and it is almost all work that you are going to do. We're going to ask very little of your dog. So while I would like you to have your dog in the room with you while you work through these steps that I'm going to outline, your dog is going to have a pretty easy time of it. And uh, if you have a friend or a partner, someone you do training with, who you can have with you uh, as you go through these steps, I think that's a good idea. We are going to use exactly 60 treats, but if you want to start by counting out 120 treats, uh, I think it's wise because you can do one round yourself and then your partner can give you some feedback and then your partner can do one round and you can give feedback. Or you can go through all the steps yourself and then do another round with another 60 treats 
in a new spot, whether that's a new room or maybe even in a quiet spot outside, but you can go ahead and start generalizing this training to new spaces right away. Now, I know you might be thinking 60 treats, 60 treats times two, that's 120 treats. Is Annie crazy? That's ridiculous. But keep in mind, I want your treats to be as small as you can get away with. Uh, you can get 60 treats out of half of a hot dog if you quarter the hot dog and then slice it real thin. If you're using pencil eraser size treats like uh, Tricky Trainers, which I really like, which we sell at school and at storeforthedogs.com, then you only need 15 of those treats because each one, you can kind of use your thumbnail to break each one into four pieces. Or you could use like a food roll. We recently started carrying the Happy Howie's line of food rolls at, uh, at our studio and at storeforthedogs.com. One of those, a couple thin slices chopped up will bring you to 60 treats. Um, I mean, you could even use a bowl of kibble. You, you could break each piece of kibble de- into a couple pieces, depending on the piece of kibble you're using. But part of the reason why I want your treats to be really, really small is because I want your dog to swallow them really quickly because we're gonna be going for speed here. And if your dog has to do a lot of chewing in between reps, it's gonna slow you down. Also, if you use something really crumbly and your dog is looking to pick up the little crumbly pieces, that's also gonna slow you down, which is one reason why kibble might not be the best choice depending on the kind of kibble you're using and and your dog. Uh, So think about what your dog is going to be able to swallow super fast and that uh, isn't going to end up in crumbs on the floor. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to first count out 10 treats. I want you to hold those 10 treats in your non-dominant hand, the hand that you do not write with. So I'm a righty, for me that's my left hand. And uh, if you're gonna use a clicker, you're gonna hold the clicker in the same hand. Now we've talked about using a clicker before. It's not required, but it is gonna be useful to have some kind of marker for this exercise. When I don't use a clicker, I use a word. The word I usually use is yes, and uh, you're welcome to use either a clicker or a yes for this exercise. I don't usually suggest using both just because it's overkill and our goal is to be giving uh, minimal, very clear information. Um, And I think using a clicker and a yes at the same time is just more information than we really uh, need to be giving. So you have your 10 treats and your clicker in one hand. You're not gonna be using your clicker just yet, but we are gonna be using it shortly, so I want it ready to go. Your other hand should be empty, and I suggest you do this exercise kneeling on the floor with your dog in front of you on some kind of mat. Now, like I said, we're not asking very much of your dog for most of this exercise so I actually don't really care very much where your dog is or what he or she is doing but I do suggest having some kind of training mat out I like using a training mat anyway Um, and you're going to be placing the treat onto this mat ideally on the same spot on the mat uh, regularly so I have a feeling your dog is going to end up (laughs) on that mat interested in that specific spot where the treat is appearing So you have your 10 treats. Your first treat is gonna be kind of like a freebie treat. I want you to grab a treat using your right hand from your left hand, that the can that has a clicker on it. Grab one treat out, put it on the spot, that's sort of your X spot on your training mat, okay? Now, whenever I'm teaching look, I always like to start with a free treat on the ground. Reason being is ultimately what we're teaching a dog to do is to look up at us because we are above them. And a good way to make sure your dog is going to look up at all is to start with them looking down. So like I said, there are lots of different ways to teach look, but pretty much every way that I like to teach it always starts with a free treat on the ground to make sure your dog starts out looking down so then you can reward your dog for looking up. Now, this treat that you just put on the ground, this is going to be point one of your three-point triangle. Point two is going to be your left hand, if you have your treats in your left hand. 
Point two is going to be your right hand if you have treats in your right hand. Um, and then point three is going to be your forehead, kind of in that third eye spot, all right? So we are going to go through the ten treats in your hand, uh, going one point to the other to the other. And I will uh, say it out loud <laughs> to help you get it right. So point one was the treat you already put down. Point two is going to be taking that treat out of your hand. Point three is going to be your forehead. And then you're going to put the treat back down on the mat at point one. Now you're reaching into your hand, grabbing a single treat, putting it to your forehead, putting it back down on the mat at point one. Now you're grabbing a treat from your hand, putting it at your forehead, back down at point one. Treat from hand, treat to forehead, back down at point one. Treat from hand, treat to forehead, back down at point one. Now what is your dog doing while you're doing this? I don't care, but we'll get to that. <laughs> but I'm gonna guess your dog is interested in the treats that you are putting on the mat, okay? Once you've gotten through these 10 treats, we're gonna move on to step two. Again, you're gonna start with that freebie treat on the mat right in front of you. Now you're going to reach into your, your pocket hand, let's call it, your point two, grab that treat, and you're gonna bring the treat to your forehead. Now the only thing that's gonna change this time is that as soon as that treat touches your forehead, aren't you excited to have uh, some hot dog grease on your forehead right now? <laughs> as soon as that treat touches your forehead, I want you to click. Or if you're not using the clicker, you're going to say yes. Uh, but point three is now going to be marking that moment. And usually we click when your dog does something uh, to mark the moment that they do something that we like. I'm switching things up a little bit. You're clicking yourself here, okay? I promise this is not forever. This is only for <laughs> one small part of this exercise. So you're gonna start again by putting a freebie treat down on your preferred spot on the mat, grabbing another treat from your pocket hand. That's gonna be your point two. Point three is again at your forehead, except this time when the treat gets to your forehead, you are going to click. So treat one on the ground, treat two from your hand, treat three at your forehead and clicking when you get there and you're going to do this 10 times, and uh, it really shouldn't take you a whole lot longer than, oh, I don't know, 20 seconds to get through 10 treats like this. And again, do not be concerned about what your dog is doing. In fact, if uh, you find you're too distracted by your dog, do it with your eyes closed. We are still in the human practice portion of this training exercise, and uh, your dog should be expected to do nothing except eat the treats that you're putting down on the mat. So treat on the ground, picking out a treat from your hand, putting a treat at your forehead, clicking when you get there, and then putting that treat on the ground, getting another one from your hand, clicking at your forehead, putting the treat back down on the ground 10 times. Got it? All right, great. Good job. All right, if you want to take a quick break, Wash that uh, hot dog grease off your forehead. You are welcome to. Uh, and our third stage, our, our treats numbers uh, 21 through 30, are going to be used doing pretty much the same exercise you were doing before. We're just going to change one small thing, and that is you are going to start adding in the word look. Now, like I said, you don't have to use the word look. You could use another word. You could use your dog's name, not a bad idea. In fact, you can do this exercise and teach it with multiple words. After you teach look, you can go ahead and teach eyes or watch or whatever. You can teach your dog's name like this. The only reason I suggest using something other than your dog's name at this point is because I'm guessing you've probably used your dog's name to mean many things in the past and I want you to pick something that's kind of brand new, something that doesn't have meaning to it. And I like look rather than watch me or look at me, just because it's a thing that you can say very quickly and crisply. 
And I find it's something that you can say using a kind of excited voice. And that's the voice I want you to use. We definitely know that dogs respond to pitch and they tend to respond to higher pitches differently than they respond to lower pitches. And I'm gonna want you to use that higher pitch, use that higher register. I call it my dog sexy voice. Look, right, rather than look. It's kind of like higher higher voices, higher pitches tend to attract a dog. Lower voices tend to sort of encourage distance between a dog and, and wherever the voice is coming from. And I say that because it's not always a human. Certainly dogs use pitch with each other. And, uh, you know, there's a difference between that kind of mm, 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 puppy, puppy sounds of, you know, mommy come to me and or, or, or woof, you know, like get away from me. I want distance between me and you, kid, kind of voice. All right, so you got your next 10 treats in your hand. You start out again, freebie treat on the ground. Grab the next one from your pocket hand, your point two. Point three, you're gonna bring that treat to your forehead. Now, when it gets to your forehead, you are going to say, look, and then you are going to click. So same exercise as before, except you're saying look before you click and you're saying look the second that treat gets to your forehead. And then bring that treat back down to point one. All right, so now it's at point one, grab a new one from point two, your pocket hand, bring it to your forehead, look, click, and then back down to point one. Point two is grabbing it from your pocket hand up to your forehead, point three, look, click, and then back down to point one. Again, whatever your dog is doing at this point doesn't matter. Now I'm going to let you in on a secret of uh, why I like this exercise. One reason why I like this exercise is that you are not allowed to say, look, look, right? You're only going to say, look once. What reason would you have to repeat it? You're not actually asking your dog to do anything yet. Uh, your dog has uh, no requirements, no prerequisites here. So there's no reason to encourage them to actually be looking at you. Uh, if they do look at you or if they have looked at you up until this point, that's just gravy. But like I said, as far as I'm concerned, up until now, you could have been doing this exercise completely with your eyes closed. And why don't we want to repeat look? Because I don't ever like to repeat cues. I want my dog to understand what I'm telling them the first time. If I have to repeat it, to me that means either I really haven't made it worth their while or they have no idea what I'm talking about. And I think it's usually the latter. You know, think about learning another language if you've ever been to a foreign country. Uh, if you're not understanding what someone's saying to you, it doesn't really matter how many times they repeat what they're asking. And uh, with dogs, I think that's a mistake we make all the time, even when, uh, even when we know better. So I like to find ways where we can make it not even an option, where repeating a cue just would seem ridiculous. If you listen to the episode I did on teaching sit, for example, I talk about using a snap as a cue rather than saying the word sit. And one reason for that is because the word sit seems to fall out of human mouths really, really easily. We say sit five times in the two seconds it takes a dog to respond to the cue sit. Whereas if your cue is a snap, it's just a lot more awkward to start, you know, snapping like crazy if your dog doesn't do what you're asking right away. So I encourage you to just observe yourself when you are giving cues and if you find you're repeating a cue a lot, either start over and teach that cue from scratch or ask your dog for what you want, give that cue, and then hold off. Give your dog five, 10 seconds if need be to respond. Part of training is shaping that distance between when you ask for something and when your dog does what you ask him to do, shaping that amount of time to the point where it's shorter and shorter and practice will get you there. Okay, sorry to go off on that tangent, but now uh, we are, for this fourth step, we are finally going to set some criteria for your dog, who I hope has at this point 
uh, become pretty interested in just hanging out right in front of you and uh, probably in trying to figure out why you are holding this piece of hot dog in between your eyes all the time. So step four is going to be identical to step three, except after you say look, I want you to actually wait for your dog to look up even a little bit and then you're going to click. So if this is the first time you're going through these steps, I don't want you to wait for your dog to lock eyes with you like you're Ingrid Bergman and this is the end of Casablanca. I just want your dog to look up at you at all. And that might mean picking a specific criteria that uh, is unique to your dog. For instance, sometimes if I'm working with a French bulldog or a dog who has those kind of big bat ears like that, I'll decide I'm going to click the second I see the inside of that dog's ears. Or maybe your dog has a little patch of white on his or her chin. You can decide you're going to click the second that they're looking up enough that you can see that patch of white. Or it can be clicking as soon as you see your dog's eyes, even if those eyes aren't fully locked with your eyes just yet. But okay, so we're starting again. Point one with your freebie treat on the ground. Point two, grabbing a treat from your pocket hand. Point three, putting that treat at your forehead and you're gonna say your word, look in your best dog sexy voice as soon as the treat gets to your forehead. Now you're waiting just to be, waiting for your dog to look up at all. Again, remember this is why we put the treat on the ground to begin with, to encourage your dog's head to go anywhere other than down. Your dog's head is gonna have to go up and you're gonna click. And then the treat is going to come back down at point one, grab another one from your pocket hand, point two, up at your forehead, say, look, wait for that looking up just a little bit, click, and then treat back at the ground. Remember, you're not allowed to say, look, more than once, but you can use your tone of voice to kind of help your dog look up at you. And I'm going to guess that if you're using the right tone of voice and if you're holding a piece of hot dog between your two eyes, your dog is going to want to look up at you. All right, nice work here. We are more than halfway through this exercise. Now for the next 10 treats, treats number, uh, where are we? I guess 41 through 50. We're gonna give your dog a break again, no criteria again. You know, we're sort of, We're sort of ping-ponging back and forth between criteria for you and criteria for your dog, and right now it's on you again. This time, your triangle is going to take on a bit of a weird shape, kind of the shape of like the sail of a boat or like a kind of uh, wonky bicycle seat. Your first point of the triangle is, again, going to be that freebie treat on the ground. Second one is still going to be from your pocket hand, your non-dominant hand, where you're holding your clicker and your treats. Uh, And now the third point, though, is going to be behind your back. And I suggest you actually kind of tap behind your back as you do this, just to make sure you're hitting a very specific point here. I usually do it maybe four or five inches uh, above my butt. And we're doing this, of course, to start getting the treat out of the equation. I'm generally not a really big fan of luring, and like I said, there's lots of ways to do this exercise where you're not using luring. Um, The problem with luring, you know, especially when you're luring with food, is that it's very easy to get stuck in like treat land where your dog is like, well, I'm only gonna do this if I can see the treat. Otherwise, what's the point? Also, I tend to think luring kind of looks sort of dorky. People end up with the, what I call the raindrop hand or the mamma mia hand, right? A, a hand that's pinched, always looking like it's holding a treat even if there's not really a treat in there. They're waving their, their hand all around with this fake treat in it and uh, it's nerdy. It's dorky. I don't I don't want you to be a, a nerdy dog trainer. So this step is all about removing the treat from the equation in a rather systematic way. But we did use it to begin with because sometimes it can help to jumpstart something when you're first starting out and when your dog's first starting out. 
And whenever we're shaping a behavior with a dog, we're never making we're never making two things hard at once. We only ever want to add one level of difficulty, one criteria at a time, and that often means sort of uh, taking a step back on other criteria, and this is true of behaviors when we are shaping behaviors uh, with ourselves as well. So we're going to take out the look word that we just added. I promise we'll add it back in in a minute. But just because we're changing up the shape of our triangle, I want to focus on that for a moment. And so we're going to go back to clicking without saying a word and clicking just for yourself. Again, the dog has no criteria, again, for, uh, for this portion of the exercise. You are going to put that freebie treat down, point one. Point two, grab a treat from your pocket hand. Point three now is going to be behind your back, and you're clicking when your knuckle taps behind your back. Remember I said the, the triangle is now sort of taken on a funny shape. Bring that treat back out at point one, uh, putting it on the ground right in front of your dog. Point two, grabbing a treat from your hand again. Point three, bringing it behind your back, clicking when it gets there, bringing it back to point one. Great, so now we are in our very last segment of this exercise. We're now using treats uh, 51 through 60, and we're gonna put it all together. And uh, we are going to start asking something of your dog. Again, if this is the very first time you're doing this exercise, your criteria is still pretty low. We're looking uh, for them to be looking up at all but I've taught this exercise many times and many many times I've seen people pleasantly surprised that while they weren't paying attention to their dog for the majority of this exercise their dog was getting it and by the time you get to this sixth step your dog is making really great eye contact with you so Keep your expectations low, but be prepared also to be pleasantly surprised. So again, start out with your freebie treat on the ground. Point one, point two, grab a treat from your hand. Point three, you're going to bring it behind your back. But again, uh, like we did before, you're now going to say the word look. And I want you to say it like you have one chance to get your dog out of a burning building. Okay, you only have one chance to say this word, so make it count. Use that high-pitched voice. Look, gooey, gooey, yummy, yummy. And I want you to wait now to click until your dog looks up at you at all. Click or say your marker word like yes. Bring the treat back to point one. Grab another treat from your pocket hand, point two. Get it behind your back. The second your hand hits your back, you're gonna say look. Then you're gonna wait. Click when your dog looks up. Treat goes back down at point one and keep this up for 10 rounds. And uh, I wish I could peer through my microphone here and see you guys doing this exercise because I think we have a lot of dogs locking eyes with a lot of humans right about now. But like I said, uh, we're not looking for that just yet. However, as you practice this, and I suggest, you know, doing one or two rounds a day if you can, or at least a few times a week. Uh, it shouldn't take you more than five minutes all told to go through all of these steps. Uh, you can start raising your criteria little by little. But again, I don't want you repeating your word look. So that might mean clicking a lower version of, of look than you have in mind for your ultimate goal just so that you're not there saying, you know, look, Sadie, 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 look, 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 right? That's not what we're going for at all. One little cheat that I do sometimes allow if your dog is having a hard time with this, uh, and often if they're having a hard time, I find it's because people are afraid to use their high-pitched dog sexy gooey voice, <laughs> is to say your look as best as you can, look. And then if you really need to, follow it with some kind of oral prompt that's as subtle as possible, but something that will uh, get your dog's attention, like a little kissy noise, or some sort of whispery noise, or even some kind of like puppy whimper, 
but something that you will eventually fade out, but something that's going to get your dog's attention because it's different from everything else in the environment and appeals to, like I said, their interest in things that are of a higher pitch. Uh, Ultimately, what we want your dog to learn is, gosh, every time my human says, look, he then does that funny little noise, (laughs) which makes me look at him. So I might as well look at him as soon as he says, look, because I know what's going to be coming next. However, if you can avoid some kind of secondary cue like that or prompt, uh, I suggest it just because it's not the habit that we want to get in ourselves. And uh, most dogs don't need it. It's just a matter of being patient. And I think that's always true of adding a cue. We tend to expect our dogs to respond within half a second And, uh, you know, sometimes I need two or three seconds and uh, you need to breathe and wait for the response that you're looking for rather than trying to help them. Or you need to roll back your criteria and uh, reinforce some lesser version of the behavior so that they don't lose interest. And another reason that I like this exercise is because, like I said, you are going for speed here. And one reason that there is no criteria for your dog during much of this exercise is because I just want you keeping up the pace. I don't want you waiting to see if your dog is figuring things out. I am going for quantity over quality. And in my experience, if in something like this, you focus on the quantity, the quality of the behavior will get there uh, faster than you expect. So if you've been working on this with a partner, I suggest switching now. Ask for some feedback from your training partner. Uh, And now it's your turn to critique their work. Have them go through these six steps. Or if you've been working through the steps alone, if your dog still seems into it and uh, you think your dog still has some room left in his or her tummy, uh, go try this in another room. Or if you're in a studio apartment, you don't have another room to try it in, just change something else in the environment just to start generalizing this behavior. Turn the TV on, turn the radio on, change your position. Just do something a little bit different uh, and try the whole thing again. And next time, like I said, you can raise your criteria a little bit or you can try skipping some steps and seeing how that goes. But uh, never be afraid to go back to the very basics, go back to the very first step that we we went over. It's never a bad idea to start teaching something from scratch. Even if you're a genius and your dog is a genius, it can't hurt. I'm eager to see where you all get with this exercise, so please tag School for the Dogs on Instagram if you post any uh, practice videos or post them at uh, facebook.com slash groups slash school for the dogs or email podcast at school for the dogs.com Woof shout out this week goes to my cousin Ava who lives in England and has gotten pretty involved in dog rescue ended up with three dogs who frankly We're having a hard time living all together. Three dogs is a lot for anyone to handle, and these three dogs were not the perfect match. So she recently made the hard decision to rehome two of the dogs. I believe one is going to a friend of hers in England, and the other is going to go live with my uncle in New Jersey. And Ava recently flew over from the United Kingdom with the dog to bring the dog to my uncle and uh, help acclimate her to her new to her new home, her New Jersey home. Uh, her name is Kira, and uh, I look forward to meeting Kira. I think she's going to be coming to school for the dog sometime soon. And uh, And a hat tip to Ava for making that hard choice that I think was the right choice. Sometimes finding a different home for a dog really is the best best thing for that dog.
fun dog fact of the day, someone recently told me that Trump was the first president to not have a dog. And uh, I thought that didn't sound quite right. I mean, I'm kind of glad he doesn't have a dog. I think I would feel bad for the dog, if only because uh, he says a lot of derogatory things about dogs, or at least he, he tends to uh, use the word dog as some kind of slur when uh, I think many people would be honored to be compared to a dog. Anyway, I looked it up and it's not true that he is the first president in the White House to not have a dog, but he is the first president in over a century who hasn't had a dog. The last dogless president was William McKinley and only uh, 14 of the 44 presidents preceding Trump have uh, lived in homes without dogs during their presidency. So if you're thinking of running for president, you might as well get a dog. It will probably help your chances. Actually, I don't really know if that's true, but I hope it's true. And it's worth mentioning that Oprah has five dogs. So maybe she can uh, use that to her advantage in the Electoral College or something like that. Maybe? Maybe. Special thanks to Brene Yarrow for her ukulele cover of Look for the Silver Lining. And, as always, to Alex Chris for producing this podcast. Thanks so much for listening. You can support School for the Dogs podcast by telling your friends about it, leaving a review, or shopping in our online store. You can learn more about us and sign up to get lots of free training resources when you visit us online at schoolforthedogs.com. 